Hey there everybody, thanks for joining me for another one man review. Today I'll be looking at an interesting book from Van Ryder Games. This is Mr. Wingletter, The Adventurous Messenger. Uh, Van Ryder Games has a subset of their game company that's called Graphic Novel Adventures, GNA Junior. And these are choose your own choice, choose your own path game books for kids. Uh, I've be, become a fan of like the idea of game books since reading Jason Shiga's work. Uh, starting with Meanwhile and his last couple that have come out piqued my interest and then we have a couple since this is for kids I'm not going to mention the one that I thought was really well done but completely inappropriate and then also George Wilesall's uh, 2120 or whatever what 2020 whatever that was called um, I, I really like the idea of these choose your own adventure game books I particularly like when there's extra components to the game book. So like in this one, it's not just a choose your own adventure thing. There's also an actual game to play where you have these letters already in your mailbag. And then as you go through the game, um, characters will give you other letters that are urgent to deliver. And there's also like a hide and seek game in the art where you're trying to pick up these items. Uh, so it's actually a pretty complex game, even though it's simple to play. And the, the one I won't mention came with an app where you could keep track of points and stuff like that. So I'm seeing these things develop into something more than a mere choose your own adventure. And I really quite like that. I don't know that I've seen one, though, where like the story really adds up to much. I think the George Wilesall book was the most interesting in terms of story. But there was some deficiencies with how easy the book was to use. And I think some printing errors that made it impossible for me to use. But anyways, this is a pretty simple one in terms of the mechanics. Uh, you're basically become Mr. Wingletter, and it's your job to go through and deliver letters to people. You'll know in a panel where you can deliver a letter because there's like a little bubble. Sometimes the bubble is small and hidden, so it's hard to find, so it adds an extra bit to the game. But basically, you'll go to, like here it says, you know, go to 53. It's color-coded, which was a bit hard for me because I'm partially colorblind. But luckily, you could flip through real easy at the bottom and see the 53. So you go to 53, and you start your game, and you can go back to 10 or 5. One of the things I found not as well done about this as Meanwhile is on Meanwhile, these tabs that stuck out were actually just one tab so if I wanted to get to the yellow I could actually just grab the yellow tab here obviously it's it, a little bit harder you have to actually you know flip through to get back to the yellow tab but for me anyways looking for the numbers it was easier to just flip and look at the numbers so that's pretty much the mechanism of the game you see these little symbols here they'll show up uh, if you can deliver the letter or not and there's also like a strange thing where you'll have to flip back to once you deliver a letter you'll flip back to here if it's a regular letter and if it's an urgent letter you go here and then the characters will tell you like oh you can continue at 49 and so then you go back to 49 and then you have some different options here there's also, because it's for kids, there's this thing where after you've delivered a certain amount of letters or you reach a certain spot, it will tell you to take a break. Here you can see this character has one of the little bubbles on him, so we need to deliver a letter. I do find in these books it's better to write in them. You know, they're a game to play. I don't think they're a precious thing, so we were making marks. Tori and I played this together. I think we completed, here's another one where you have a letter to deliver. And this has an urgent, so you know that somewhere in here there's characters that it's urgent to deliver the letters as well. And then, like I said, there's these object hunts, so you're looking for things. I don't know if there's one, but you know, maybe like one of these or one of the fruits or one of the utensils would be something that you're looking for along the way. So there's a lot of different like little sub games to play. The only thing I find frustrating about these books is it's, it's pretty hard to backtrack unlike a video game where you can kind of just walk back like you have to really remember like have I already been to 64 oh no I need to go man I've been to 64 like five times so by the end of the book Tori and I were having a hard time finding our way to like the last little few pan this was one of the panels we were having a hard time to get through finding and so we went through and basically had to cheat because it was too hard to backtrack and figure out where we had missed the one connection. And we just threw, went through and were checking off like, yeah, we did everything on that page. Yeah, we did everything on that page. And then we were eventually 
able to get back. I would imagine it would be even more difficult to be playing this like stopping in between, but I get why for kids and parents playing this with their kids, you don't want to be like, we don't want to blow through it all in one night. We want to come back later. So we'll have those little sleepy things. The story is cute and fun. The artwork's really nice, cute and fun, as you can see. But it doesn't add up to anything. I'm really waiting for a book where the, and the George Wilesall book is the closest I've seen where the content actually justifies the game nature somehow. Meanwhile, kind of had the idea of quantum physics built into it a bit that justified the book. This, obviously, it's a book for kids, so you're not going to get too deep in terms of uh, syncing up the content to the mechanisms of the book. But I really see potential in here. I don't think there's going to be too many great books that are made this way. I, I don't know how many you know, stories there are that could be told that would sync up with the game mechanism where it actually lends to the content. But I do think there are some great game books out there waiting to be made that will be real pieces of, like of art, a real literary statement on their own. Um, this is just one for kids, so it's not for that. But I do think this would be really, really fun to play with your kids. We tried to get Jack to play it with us, but he wasn't very interested in a video game that he couldn't actually, you know, crazy graphics on screen. But I do think for most parents, this would be a really good way to get your kids into comics, into reading comics. Uh, it's, you know, pretty complex. It'll make them think. So these are really fun. I don't think for me that I would buy anything else in this series because they are geared towards kids. But uh, there was at least two other books in this series that you could go get. And it looked like the company in general had a lot of different games. So definitely one I would recommend for either people who are interested just in the formal mechanisms of these kinds of things like I am or for people who have kids. Like and subscribe and hit the bell, please. So Carson can finish reading his books and let me go home.